Good evening. Tonight we're going to start with lesson three in our decimal unit. I can represent mixed numbers with units of tens, ones, and tenths, with place value disks on the number line and an expanded form. With our first example tonight, what we're going to see, we have C right here, a number line, and this number line is starting off with a whole number of two. And we are going to look at this right here, point C, and we're going to use this as the number line to look at. We have to find what decimal number is at this spot. We place it here. From that, we're going to make our mixed number, because remember, these are the same things. They just look differently, but they're still the same thing. Then we're going to write it in expanded form. And then the question is, how much do we have to add to that to get to the next whole? So right now we see that this point C is between the whole number of 3 and 4. So it's not quite close to 4, but it's a little after 3. So we know that our whole number is going to be 3. So our mixed number is going to be with a 3, and then this part is going to be the fraction. So let's see how much is in between the two holes of 3 and 4. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the next hole. This will be 10 tenths. So we are at, right here, point C is at 3, 3, and 2 tenths. All right, now we're used to seeing that because we, have, we did our fraction unit. But now let's take that and put it into decimal form. So how many ones do we have? Well, we have three ones and at our decimal point. After that decimal point, we're going to place our fraction, two tenths. Where would the two go? Well, the two is in the tenths place. So three and two tenths is a decimal form, and a mixed number is three and two tenths. So now if we want to write this in expanded form, well, how many ones do we have? We've got three ones. So we write three times one plus how much fractions do we have? We have two at one tenth because there's two of one tenths. And that is how we would write our expanded form. If we would have wanted to put that together again, we would do the work in the parentheses first. Remember that distributive property. And three times one is three plus two times one tenth is two tenths which will end up putting this together, three and two tenths. And that is what we have right here. And it's the same thing as saying this. So now how much more do we have to get till we get to the next one, to the next hole? So how much more do we have to go to get to this next hole right here? Well, we have three and two tenths. How much more do I need to add that to get to the next 10 tenths? And that would be, we would need to add 8 10 tenths to get to 4. All right, let's continue on with the next example. Our number line here is starting with the whole of 4. And it's in between the whole number of 4 and the whole number of 5. So it's not quite at 5 yet but it looks like it's almost halfway there. But we're going to look at this point A right here. So we're looking at point A. And this is the number line that we're going to use to examine. So this kind of will be placed here. And then we're going to look for the decimal form of this point A and the mixed number for that point A. Write it in expanded form. And then see how much more until we get to the next hole. All right, so looking at this number line, we are going to say that right now we've got in between four and five is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This would be ten tenths. So we are at one, two, three, four tenths. So we would write this as four and four tenths. Well, how does that look like as a fraction? Well, how many holes do we have? We have four holes, and we need to add our decimal, and then to the right of that decimal, 
we were going to place our fraction, and our fraction is saying four tenths. So where is the four located? Well, it's in the tenths place. So that is how the decimal form and the mixed number looks for this number line. But now we need to write it as an expanded form. And we are going to say, how many ones do we have? Well, we've got four copies of one plus, don't forget the fraction. How many one-tenths do we have? Well, we have four copies of one-tenth. And that is how our expanded number looks for this. We could actually write this, too, for the decimal form. Four times one plus four copies of one-tenth. Because this fraction one-tenth is the same thing as this decimal. This is one-tenth, that's one-tenth, same thing. So you could write it either way. So how much more do we have to add to get from four and four-tenths to get to the next hole, which would be five? Well, let's see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we would need to add six-tenths to get to five, our next hole. All right, number one, part A, how many tenths in all? Well, let's count. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we have fourteen tenths, which would look like this fourteen over ten, which is um, an improper fraction, a fraction greater than one. So we need to take that 14 tenths and turn it into a decimal. Well, we know we're going to have a whole number in there because it's a fraction greater than 1 because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So let's pull out those holes that we see in 14 tenths. Well, we can pull out, oops, we can pull out one hole, which would be 10 tenths, which is our hole. And then we're left with four tenths. So our mixed number is one and four tenths. So how does that look like as a, a decimal? Well, we have one whole, and then the four is in the tenths place. So how much more do we need to get to two, to the next whole, which would be two? Well, if we got four tenths, in order to get to that next 10 tenths, we would add six tenths to it, or six tenths. It's the same thing. All right, let's look at part B. How many tenths in all? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. So we've got twenty-five tenths, and it looks like twenty-five over ten, which is an Improper fraction, a fraction greater than one, so we're going to be pulling out some holes from there. How many holes can we pull? Well, we can pull one, that would give us that, and then another one, which would be 20 tenths. We do not have enough to make another, so we've got two holes, and we've got five tenths left over. So there's two holes and five tenths. Well, how does that look? Well, we've got over here, let's change the color. We got one hole, one hole, and then we've got five tenths left over. Oops. Okay. These are our place value disks. All right, so now we can say what's our decimal form? Well, we've got two holes and we have five tenths. How much more do we need to add to two and five tenths to get to three holes? Well, it would be another five tenths to get to that 10 tenths, which would bring us to our next hole, which would be three. In our next example, they give us the mixed number already, which is four and six tenths. We need to place it on our number line. We then need to give it a decimal form, 
Then we need to take this and create expanded form and then answer this question, how much more do I need to add to this to get to the next hole? So let's look at the, let's examine the number line. What are going to be our two holes that this would be placed in between? Well, we can know that we're going to start with four because four is what our mixed number has. And then in order to go to the next, it's in between what number? Well, what number comes after four? The next whole number would be five. And then let's count to see how much in between. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tenths. There's ten is our next hole, which is five. So where would this be placed? Well, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So our place would be right here. So this is point A. All right, so this represents four and six tenths. Now, how does four and six tenths look like a, as a decimal form? Well, we've got four holes and the six is in the tenths place. So four and six tenths is the decimal point. What does that look like as an expanded form? Well, how many ones do we have? We have four copies of one plus how many tenths do we have? We have six of one tenth. That's our expanded form. Or we could write it as decimal form. And we've got four copies of one plus six copies of one tenth. Now, how much more do we need to add to this to get to the next hole? Well, we can say, we can look, we can look at our number nine. One, two, three, four. We would need four more tenths to get to the next hole or the decimal point. So this is either way is acceptable. Four tenths more or the decimal point, four tenths more. And our next one, we have to label point C on the number line, but the only thing that they're giving us is the expanded form. So what we need to do is we need to solve this in order to, in order to place everything else in these boxes to complete our chart. So let's figure it out. We got six times 10, well, that's 60. We get three times one, well, that's a three. And then we have six copies of one tenth, well, that becomes six tenths. We can do that as a fraction, or we should get into the habit of those decimals. All right, now let's put that all together. We get 60 plus 3 is 63, so we have 63 holes, and we have 6 tenths. So now we can actually put this in our chart, 63 and 6 tenths as a mixed number. 63 and 6 tenths. And now it's asking us to place it on the number line. Well, what two holes is it in between? Well, we know that we're starting with 63. And what's going to come, what's the next hole after 63? Well, it's going to be 64. So 63 and 6 tenths have to be placed in between those two holes. Well, let's count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is broken up into tenths. Let's find our six. We have one, two, three, four, five. Here's our halfway. It's this one right here. So let's put it there. And there is our point C, which is 63 and six tenths. So how much more do I need to add to that six tenths to get to the next hole, to get to that 10 tenths? Well, it would be four tenths or zero and four tenths. Either one is acceptable, but try to get into that habit of the decimals. And in our next example, they gave us the number line and then they tell us how much more they need to add to get to the next hole. 
and they're telling us five more tenths to get to that whole. And if you look at the number line, the number line looks like it's really kind of just split in half. We're at the halfway point. And that halfway point, anytime we have a halfway point between two holes, that is end up going to be coming 24 and a half, which is 25, 24 and 5 tenths. So that's now how we know that we need to add 5 more tenths to that to get to 25. But now we got to complete everything else. Well, we just did the decimal form, didn't we? 24 and 5 tenths. And our mixed number becomes 24 and 5 tenths. And now if we want to write an expanded form, well, let's look at our tens. How many copies of 10 do we have? Well, we have two copies of 10, 2 times 10. How many copies of 1 do we have? Well, we've got four copies of 1. And then how many, uh, how much, how many copies of 1 tenth do we have? Well, we've got five copies of 1 tenth. And another way to write this, two copies of 10 plus four copies of one plus five copies of one tenth as a decimal. So each one of those is acceptable. But again, try to really get into the habit of using the decimals now. Practice happy thinking every day. Keep telling yourself that you can do it and give it your best shot. Okay, number one, using this number line, what is point A? Give the mixed number and the decimal point for point A. Next one, for point B, what is it? Give the mixed number and the decimal for the point B. Four times 10 plus two times one plus three times one tenth. I want the mixed number and the decimal for this expanded form. And uh, bring all your work in tomorrow so I can see how well you've been doing. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is just that, a little extra. Have a wonderful night, guys.